In this video, I'm going to introduce to you the pen tool in Photoshop. The pen tool can be used in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and various programs through Adobe, and will give you the most control when selecting an object. So that is why I like it the best over all the selection options, because it can give me the most control over what I'm trying to select. I chose this image particularly because the background sort of matches the colors within the turtle and sometimes with these selection tools it can be harder to pick that up with a nice selection. So that's why we're going to go to the pen tool here. So the pen tool, we have pen tool, freedom pen tool, curvature, add an anchor, subtract, and convert. So we're going to mostly focus on the pen tool and sort of how to work with that and maneuver it and we can delete and add and also convert point tool. So first off you can you can start wherever you like but we will be selecting the whole thing so if I hit P on my keyboard it goes automatically to the pen tool. What I've noticed is that when you're first starting off with the pen tool most like to take small steps and so you might have a thousand anchor points by the end which in some cases is needed, like if you're doing a flower petal with lots of twists and turns. But with something like this, we could take slightly bigger jumps once we start to feel comfortable with the overall pen tool. So I'm going to zoom in here for us. With the first step, you want to remove your, your hand from the mouse and not continue, just so you can sort of see what the anchor point looks like and how to work with it. So when you see that slash over the pen tool mark, that just means it's in neutral. It's waiting for the next sort of command that you want to give. Now when I want to do my next step here is I'm going to click, but instead of clicking off, I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to click and drag. So think of the pen tool as in opposites. So if I need to go down and to the left, then I need to force my hand or guide my hand down and to the right. So my hand and my mouse are moving down to the right, but I can see that here it's going up and to the left. Okay, now my hand is off of the mouse. And that is one of the most important parts for you to remember is that it's just not click and then click and then click. To get more of these rounded areas or to go to sort of semi longer jumps, you will want to click and drag and form that while it's still active. Now what you can do is on a Mac and on a PC, on a Mac hold down option, on a PC hold down control, you want to guide these handlebars and make sure that it is close to the anchor point. And so what I'm doing here, I'm doing the hotkey for the convert anchor point. And it is a really nice hotkey. So option on a Mac, control, I believe, on a PC. And so what you're doing, you're getting into that triangle. And you have to sort of hover over the handlebars here. If you're far away, it won't make a difference. So I am clicking and dragging that up and getting that close to it. The reason why I'm doing this, that if I would have left this like this and gone down here, yes, it would have gone in sort of the direction that I wanted it to, but with a lot less control. Because what's happening here, this is extended quite long. And it's also extended this way. So it's forcing my mouse and the pen tool mark to go down to that area. So I'm going to do Command Z, which is one of my favorite hotkeys, which means step back. Hold down Option again, hover over the handlebar, click and drag up. And then I'm going again, clicking and dragging. I'm not letting go. And now I did. This is a great example of why you want to control your handlebars right when you have them. Because if not, you're going to have to go back and fix all this. So again, I'm going to come here. Instead of sucking it up here, I'm actually going to come over and just guide it a little bit over this way, since that's where I have to go anyways. And again, if you don't like what the mark that you're doing, all you have to do is do Command Z or Control Z on a PC and go back. And you'll notice I'm not going right to the edge here. I like to not go right to the edge because that leaves for a cleaner end. But if you really want those details, you know, like me coming here and getting that little divot, you can do that. So again, I'm taking this, holding an option, and bringing that up. 
And then if I zoom out a little bit, I can sort of see how far I can go with this. So I'll try to come to here and it might or might not work, but you should try to see how big of a jump you can make too. So I'm going to click and drag. And again, I have to go up to the left, so I have to go slightly down and to the right with my handlebar. And I can move it once I have it where it's at, left or right, to get it specifically right where I like. And you know, that's good for me. So again, holding down Option, clicking and dragging. So that's a nice big jump that I just made instead of doing five or six or seven little ones. It does not work for every one of these, so if it doesn't feel like it's working for you, just go back and do a couple more anchor points. You know, with here, I really want to get sort of the bump, so I'm going to maybe do smaller ones to make sure that that happens for me. And again, it's really important to feel comfortable with the pencil. If you're an expert after this lesson, that's awesome, but usually it will take you several times to feel comfortable with this and confident. And believe me, you'll want to because especially for Photoshop, but more even so for Illustrator, you will want to feel comfortable with this. So again, I know I have to go up and to the right with my second handlebar over here. So I had to guide my hand down and to the left. And again, holding down Option, Control on a PC, clicking and dragging that all the way back up here. And you know, again, some of these I know are turns and twists, so I'm going to take smaller jumps with them. Now I could do a, a Command Z here to get rid of an anchor point, but I can also come here and just click off one. Obviously that's not really what I want to do because that ruins it, but that's something I can do. And I can also come here and I can add an anchor point too. And what that does, that gives me extra options to then control it and move it. Which is great if you think you want to get extra little bumps or, or twists and turns that you might have looked over quickly. And then make sure to hit the P again to come back to the full pen tool. So go ahead and try the big jumps and see how you do with those, but don't neglect the detail. The biggest thing in here, it shouldn't look like it's cut by scissors from, you know, an elementary schooler. So take your time. If you have to do this a couple times, which you might have to to feel comfortable with it, go ahead and do that because again, you will want to master this tool. It is great to have this much control over what you can get because it might look like with some of them that, like with the quick selection or the magic wand, you think you might be getting this control when you're really not, when you're up close. It might be picking up particles, and then you have to go in and do a bunch more cleanup, where if you just would have taken the time to do this in the first place, you would have had more time in the end saved. So again, I want these little grooves here, so I'm just taking my time, clicking and dragging, holding down Option, and this is where you should really just have your finger always on option or control to help with this for speed. So again, option is the convert anchor point, and it is an amazing hotkey to just be comfortable with. Again, if I don't like something, I can go back and move it or add an anchor point or subtract one, right? To move around, I'm just using my trackpad, but you can also use this hand tool here. So even if you're like in mid-selection, you can come down here, move your hand tool. And I'm doing this just with my mouse or my trackpad. And the hotkey to get to that is also spacebar. So it's not even highlighted, but Photoshop knows that you want the hand tool, which what that does, it doesn't move around anything on your board, but it moves around the whole image for you. So nothing is shifting, 
but it's just able to move it, which is great. So you're not going to disturb anything by doing that. A handy thing to know. So again, that's a little bit weird there. So I'm gonna come back, work with this, make sure it's in the right setting. And again, I might have way more points down here because there are a lot more turns. And that is 100% okay. But here, I can come here and let's see how far I can go. Due to this little curve here, it might be a little bit harder, but I'm going to come here. And I'm going to keep working here. And yeah, it's not going to work quite right because of that. So let me get up here. And now I bet I can go even further. This is where you might want to zoom out more. Because your handlebars will have to extend a lot to get this. And it's just really working with the eye and seeing how it fits best. And that works well for me. So I'm gonna stop there. And then there's the head. So you'll notice that when two points connect, when you're, when you're done with connecting everything, it's gonna turn into a circle right there. And that means, okay, we're done, we're good, everything's connected, you've got all your points. Okay, so everything's done there. And you can see less anchor points around here, a little less down here and a lot more over here. So the thing to do now is that yes, everything is connected and it is penciled, but you need to select it. And how to do that here is that there's layers, channels, paths. You need to go to paths and you need to come down here to this icon. So load path the selection, or as I like to call it, my marching ants. And you can see it makes a little outline of where the anchor points went around, right? And it does look like a weird little turtle thing right there. So I'm gonna come here and select that. So right now what it's doing is selecting the turtle. So if I hit delete and made sure this was highlighted, if I hit delete, it would take away that. Now again, I had to unlock and I had to make sure this was highlighted in light gray, but I don't want that. I, I want the ocean done. I'm, I don't want the ocean anymore. So I'm actually gonna come up here to select and then inverse and then hit delete. And there's my little guy floating around. And then from here, what you can do, you can come up to select, deselect, or another great hotkey to know is command D. So this should be your finished piece here. And I also want you to, let's add a layer. Make sure to put it down. We're gonna label this. Turtle and back. And so with the back, let's find like a cool contrast color here. You can pick whatever you want, but I'll just do hot pink. Let's see, it's my foreground color here. So I'm gonna do option, delete. And I'm gonna have a um, floating on a pink back. All right, and then make sure again to file, save as, save to your computer so you can upload and then save that as a JPEG. All right, let me know if you have any questions.